Good evening, you guys, and welcome back to another live stream here on the Sergeant Tank Pets YouTube channel. This channel is really geared around anywhere from beginner to the most advanced aquarist. Um, and anybody who's been following this channel for any period of time uh, can look back in the repertoire of videos and so forth that have been put out on this channel, uh, which some of them uh, do gear a little bit more towards um, intermediate to advanced, and there is some videos as well. Uh, that are out there for you guys uh, as far as beginners. I do have a few playlists uh, that I still need to go through and update. However, there is some playlists on the channel, so you can always feel free to check it out. And if you guys enjoy this content, do me a favor right now, go ahead and smash that like button as well as uh, subscribe. Um, if you wanna see more content like this, um, not that it's gonna be in a live stream format, However, uh, we'll try to put out some videos here in the future for you guys uh, that are um, edited uh, as we have uh, here on the channel. So let's see who we got here in the chat. We got Charlie List. Hello. We got Dank Tanks. We got The Fish Life. Uh, we have Susan for SLC Aquatics. Hello. Hello. So again, I appreciate uh, each and every one of you guys for the support. I'm here to try to support uh, you guys. That's why I do what I do. And I just thought it was a good topic. We've talked about this before uh, in the past here on this channel. However, I thought it would be a good opportunity to go ahead and uh, kind of kick out, even though we are already in March, uh, that oftentimes a question is brought up, and I know for myself included, uh, as far as what fish to breed for profit. And that is always the magical um, there is no magical formula for that, and I will kind of go in to a few things uh, that, you know, I learned from uh, many years back as far as starting out, trying different things, trying different species of fish, uh, and I'll just kind of give my take on over 12 plus years of breeding fish that I find uh, the most uh, return, I guess you would say, on investment. And again, each demographic in each area is going to be a little bit different, but this is a great opportunity for you guys in order to give your insight and feedback as well as to ask me uh, any questions uh, here. And that, that's what the platform's for. So we're going to spend the next hour and just really just chit chat and discuss and try to dive into some of those areas uh, that uh, maybe even somebody who's been keeping fish for five, six plus years uh, now want to kind of jump over to the realm of breeding and try to kind of relinquish some of those um, uh, investments that they've done uh, within the hobby. So let's see, we got Kevin in the house, KG Cichlids, we got Brent Quick, we got Island Queen. Uh, let's see here, we got Chicago Poppy, we got Kyle's A Wild World. Uh, let's see, hello, hello, we got Victor in the house, V Stag. We got Maggie's Aquariums. So, yeah, hopefully we can go here without any hiccups. Uh, that's always uh, uh, a, a plus. Um, I'm going to go ahead and mute the video. I had the, the video playing here, and that might lag things down a bit on my end. So I hope everybody's doing well. We did a live stream here talking about the uh, um, American Library Association coming up here in Grand Rapids, Michigan in May of this year, 2018. So you can check out that video. I'll go ahead and link it uh, right over here somewhere in an end card if you guys want to check it out. Um, more so for the individuals after uh, this has been uploaded to YouTube and if you're watching this on the replay. Uh, definitely, if you guys are in around the Grand Rapids, Michigan area, I highly recommend uh, that you uh, at least look into the information, check it out. And if you're a live beer geek, as a lot of us are, uh, then you can definitely uh, find some some information there uh, for you. Uh, let's see here. So <clears throat> without further ado, um, I'm going to take a drink here a second, and I'm just going to kind of look back. We'll spend the next few minutes. It's about 10 away Eastern Standard Time and the PM. Uh, just kind of where I started and what battles I learned from and so forth. And really, I'm just going to focus on the aspects of breeding, not necessarily setting up the tanks. We can go through that uh, in a different live stream or a different video or something like that. You can always comment uh, after this is uploaded. 
uh, you can always go ahead and comment. I'll give a little bit more detailed feedback on something if you're looking a little bit more specific out of the realm uh, as far as breeding fish for profit uh, per se. We got Priscilla MK Art. Uh, <laughs> your favorite troll is here. Of course, Priscilla. Uh, wouldn't wouldn't be a night without having you trolling me in the live stream. Uh, I like the new studio, Jeremy. Charlie List said, I appreciate it very much. You can see all the beautiful artwork up here. Everything that you see, uh, of course, not including the Sergeant Tank t-shirt that I have up there in the frame. That was done, of course, through Lamont Mud, uh, as most of you guys are aware. And But all of these other um, pieces of artwork, including this one, and I just received the uh, cherry shrimp through uh, the Etsy store for uh, Priscilla MK Art, so you can definitely check it out. I'm not being paid for by, endorsed by, sponsored by to say that. I just really enjoy Priscilla's artwork, and as a lot of you guys do and can relate to that. So definitely, if you want to check it out, feel free to go ahead, and you can one of your moderators can go ahead and link that. Um, and I don't know if there's a special going on right now, and if there is, Priscilla, feel free to go ahead and let people know. I definitely got on the ball as soon as I seen uh, that this one's coming out. And I do have a couple more I have to put in the frame. So you guys are just going to have to stay tuned for a future update, uh, either on Facebook or something like that, uh, once I uh, order in the frames and get those in. So let's go ahead and not waste any more time and get right into uh, the topic. So then... Again, I'm more on the fly. I don't really take notes it's right up here. And uh, just going to kind of look back of about 13 years ago. Um, and this might sound redundant to some of you guys have been following the channel for any period of time. However, just bear with me for those folks that uh, may, may not know me as well as some of you guys here in the chat or watching this on the replay. However, uh, over 13, almost 14 years ago now, uh, once we uh, got our home, purchased our home, moved in. Uh, of course, it, it dates back. I got my first aquarium when I was about eight, nine years old from an uncle. Over there's a big lapse in time there as far as fish keeping just because of work, uh, just because of life, starting a family, getting married, that type of thing. So anyways, looking back about 13 plus years ago now, maybe 14 years ago, um, started getting interested in keeping shrimp. So back at that time, the EBI or EBI by Fluval uh, was a seven and a half gallon nano setup uh, that I ended up unfortunately breaking after I was resealing it. I knocked it off the stand that I had it on about a year and a half ago, and uh, I was resealing it to actually install it into my son's classroom at that time. It's almost two years ago now, and unfortunately, I, I shattered the whole thing. And with that being said, I went ahead and um, customized and did a whole different system at that time for the classroom. Uh, but getting back on track here, I started out with the Neocaridinia devidae, which is um, just started out with your lower grade cherry shrimp. And what I did is I started selectively breeding uh, through uh, genetic lines and so forth to develop a better lineage of that specific shrimp. And uh, as time went on, um, just found the right placement, not only aesthetically that was pleasing, not only to my wife, but you know, uh, our son was very, very young, didn't understand at that time, uh, was just still uh, a toddler in diapers. And of course, it was pretty much my wife and I, or friends or family came over to enjoy it. And what we did is up in our uh, family room area, we went ahead and put it right in front of uh, one of our main bay windows, uh, right on the south side of the home. Uh, of course, we have curtains and so forth, so we can kind of um, stop some of the, um, uh, kind of dilute some of the sun from coming in. So not only did it act as a great way in order to introduce uh, beneficial uh, algae that I was looking for um, to really offer some good nutrient load and distribution there for the shrimp, uh, but also appropriate coloration because it balanced it out just appropriate at that time that I was looking for, not only for molting purposes, uh, but also for uh, coloration and just a lot of different stuff. I mean, natural sunlight when it comes to fish, shrimp, what have you, if it's done appropriately, I uh, don't really think you can get anything much better than that. That's why a lot of people enjoy doing ponds out, outside because of the coloration 
and some of the uh, aspects that go along with it by getting that natural sunlight uh, within that aquarium. And um, just with all that being said, I started out with a group of uh, roughly eight to 10 at the time because they were not cheap. I uh, got them through a local source, uh, through one of the local fish stores. And then at that time, I uh, gave it about a month and a half, two months. And uh, as they started developing of age and going through the molting process, um, started noticing, of course, a bunch of shrimplets, uh, which I got even more excited about, uh, you know, just because of my experience in fish keeping and so forth. Uh, it didn't, it, it wasn't too difficult for me in order to identify uh, the shrimplets if you know what to look for. However, I thought it was very mm -hmm. comical at that time. Um, my wife can never seem to ever be able to identify. Uh, that's why, you know, as most of us know in this hobby, especially with a darker background, uh, algae, you know, a matten filter, sponge filter, something like that, uh, that isn't going to be like a transparent, you know, where you're pretty much going to see right through them, something to block that in the background. So if it was dark or something of that nature, it was very easy to identify the triplets. And I really, really enjoyed um, because it was a different taste to start to get into something uh, in the realm of inverts that was different from that of which I was experienced with doing before. Um, and basically the rest is history. Um, reason I'm sharing that is going to jump ahead now, uh, almost 14 years later. And now we have over roughly over 80 plus aquariums currently running. As most of you guys are aware, we also have uh, a lot of those different uh, species and specimens, and not only fish and inverts that we continue to update, which is on the Sergeant Tank website. Uh, you can definitely check it out down in the description below if you are interested. We are U.S. homebred, um, just a, a a hobbyist that enjoys to breed and be able to offer those to you guys uh, at a reasonable rate, whether condition appropriately in order to adapt to your guys' water parameters with ease. Um, and now. Really what kicked it off from there is also breeding, of course, a lot of you guys might not be aware of this, but besides shrimp is really what kicked it off for me. Um, but shrimp and ancestors placos is I was really big uh, about 13 years ago, about a year after now that that of starting the, the shrimp tank, uh, I started getting into community established as far as community breeding. Uh, that could have been with uh, Pomacea brugisei mystery snails, it could be ram's horn snails, it could be other variations of snails. Uh, as most of you guys see now, truly that's what it comes down to is fine tuning a well-established aquarium in order to get the best return on investment. Profitability to me is, you know, most of us are just hobbyists. We're not a, a um, wholesale, supplier of business where our profit margins uh you know of course you're going to have to look at completely different but being myself being a complete just hobbyist that enjoys to do this uh when i'm able and so forth is be able to somewhat justify the means for this hobby and then i started looking after shrimp getting into and sisters placos um and really Shrimp and ancestors placos have been my thing for the last 13 plus years that I've been breeding. Um, I can share with you guys some tips and tricks in order to get the best yield. Um, if that is something you guys want, let me know in the chat. I've talked about it before. I'm not going to spend a great deal of time on that uh, because I want to be able to offer some time for you guys in order to ask questions uh, for myself. That's a bit of a watered down version. Uh, very long story short, um, something I could go on and on and on about is most of us can, uh, especially when it comes to breeding, because that really is what's near and dear to me that keeps me driving forward in the hobby is the aspects of breeding. I really enjoy it. Um, I enjoy taking the time and the care and the attentiveness that goes along with the aspects of, of breeding. Um, so if my number one advisement if somebody asked me right now jeremy what is your number one go-to as far as a return on investment and or 
profitability standpoint, it will be your common ancestors bushing those flakos all day long. The trick in order to get those guys successfully grown, and this is something I don't share too often because of competitive reasons. However, I want to be able to support you guys. I mean, this is why um, I was one of the number one suppliers locally probably for a decade or more when it came to Ancestors Flacos. I was literally breeding out of three different or four different Technically, it was three. Out of three different, um, I had a combination between trios and reverse trios. Each one of those was on their own continuous drip system. If you guys look back at my video, you may recall the ne uh, Neocaridinia heteropoda carbon really variant uh, with the four tanks that I used to have on a full rack. Well, they're still on a rack system. It was a whole centralized, customized filtration system that was ran on a sump years back. Uh, when I was breeding a lot of uh, shrimp and, and uh, white clouds and other nano species of fish, community fish, it was actually four other ones above that. Uh, just the reason I'm saying that is I want you guys to be able to picture what I'm talking about here. And these are these are basically 15 by 15, um, uh, uh, 15 inch by 15 inch uh, by 15 inch cube aquariums. I picked them up from a LFS that's about 45 minutes south uh, east of us and that was several years ago probably a decade ago or more maybe even 11 12 years ago now um, probably about 11 years ago if I'm dating this right is went ahead had everything customized knowing the measurements and, and all of that of course with my background it didn't take long for me to build the system and had, had everything fully automated which I do on the four tanks at that time I had uh between trios and reverse trios i'm not going to go into all of that you guys can check it out i try to add a link after this is uploaded down the description below if you guys want to check out uh my recommendations when it comes to specifically breeding and cistrus however oftentimes you find individuals indicating that three plus inches hypothetically ancestors play those aren't going to start breeding and that's just false i can get mine reproducing anywhere between seven eight months of age comes down to age, not size. And really giving some of these tips and tricks that I'm gonna share with you guys um, is I hope that you guys can find success in it. I don't put a lot as much time into breeding Placos as I used to. Um, not that I got burned out with it, I just, I now keep everything community and I just let nature take its course. What I mean by that is where I got successful and literally not even be able to keep up the demand. I was producing over four to 500 ancestors plecos on a monthly basis. Do the math. Each one of those, I was yielding a return locally. This is just local. Um, I could sell those at roughly an inch, inch and a quarter, anywhere actually between three quarters to an inch and a quarter. The main thing is developing great relationships with local fish stores. And I'm not gonna mention the fish stores just out of confidentiality reasons. However, one of the ones that was a source that I went to was actually um, a larger chain store, believe it or not. Uh, I developed a great relationship and I'm not gonna mention uh, names or uh, you know, you even try to, <coughs> um, I'm not sure how many there are outside of Michigan. However, uh, it's ones that have been around for quite a few years here within Michigan, uh, especially in Western Michigan and so forth. But um, basically every two weeks, it was a routine that I developed. And what I did is I had a tracking method and I would bring in a couple of dozen every two weeks. And that was just one location. And at that time, uh, between four and five uh, locations within a 25 mile radius, uh, is I was bringing in and I can sell those guys anywhere between for regular chocolate or brown uh, Usually I would uh, at my price uh, About uh, two or three bucks a piece and the albinos would be usually a dollar or two more than that And then basically they're selling them one-third um, or I'm sorry I'm providing them at one-third the cost of what they can sell them at uh, just to get somewhat of return obviously they were able to sell them fast enough in order to get their return 
on investment to continue to want me to bring more in and more in and more in. However, the market started getting a bit saturated. So then that's when I ventured out and started um, doing Aquabid, eBay, Craigslist. Uh, I was actually doing those things um, beforehand. However, I want to be able to support the local fish stores. And that wasn't cash, keep in mind, is um, I wasn't doing this as far as uh, store trade. Because uh, through my suppliers, I, I try to support as much as I can. However, I can just go through my own supplier and obtain whatever dry goods or so forth that I need. Uh, however, majority, 95% of the time, it was strictly cash and hand basis and walk out the door. Uh, it wasn't like store credit. It wasn't worth it to me to do that. And I made that very clear up front. The most important thing is developing relationships, first and foremost, with your local fist stores. Uh, you're going to have to go through a, a period of time to actually prove to them that you're capable of uh, not only providing good livestock. However, out of literally thousands of specimens throughout the years that I've provided locally, um, never once did I have ever have one individual ever reach out to me and ever complain of deaths, disease, anything like that. So it took me over 12 years before I felt comfortable to actually start an online business to provide livestock throughout the United States. So you kind of see where I'm going with it. And I've talked about this before is spend a year and a half, two years, just being a hobbyist before you even get into breeding. I'm telling you, um, because there's a lot of stories I could share where I lost a ton, a ton of money, a ton of time, and a ton of stress by not listening to other individuals many years back that advised me. Um, there was other things that I've read that, because I enjoy to do it, it was a waste of time and a waste of money. Um, so if you are truly doing this in order to get some type of yield or return on investment, you have to understand what's sustainable, how it grows, and be able to find the appropriate consumer for that. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of a, uh, just a few minute kind of a background there. So now I wanna head up to your guys' questions and uh, be able to give any insight that I may. So um, I'm gonna scroll back up here and chat, try to see where I left off. And I'm just going to quickly scan through. If I don't see anything that's directed towards me as far as a question, uh, then I'll go ahead and I'll just continue on. If I do miss anything, please, please put it back in the chat. Um, let's see here. Uh, Neo shrimp are like rain. They don't like change. Keep the parameters stable. And you should do well with uh, any somewhat normal parameters. Uh, consistency across the board is absolute key. Uh, Neocaridinia, there's actually uh, pH levels and so forth too that you can fine tune, believe it or not, pH, um, or not pH, I'm sorry, nitrate levels actually have a contributor in uh, that I have found in 13, 14 years of breeding. Um, but yeah, so I do plan on doing more videos, um, not so much videos, I plan on doing a blog on the website or some sort of article system that I can provide to you guys. I do have that option. It's just very, very time consuming. Um, and right now, I don't know when that's going to come out. So I'm just trying to take notes here and there. And a lot of it's going off memory. Uh, some of these things I don't even read that I used to, but I would like to provide some type of literature that's somewhat relevant in order to try to help and sustain your guys' hobby. Let's see. We got Captain Spicy. Very nice seeing you again, buddy. It's been a while. Let's see here. <clears throat> Just bear with me, you guys. Uh, we got Kyle's Wild World. We got Joel House. Uh, we got Caleb in the house. Caleb Hanna said, only half the likes of people watching. 
see here. Hey, Juicy Sickle is dropping the goodies at the Sergeant Tank website. Appreciate it very much. We got Buster Mastin. Uh, who is Jerome? Kyle's Wild World. Um, that is a name back in my old profession, a nickname that was given to me. That's all I'm going to say. I was a different, it was a different time, a different era, and I was a different person. Uh, let's see here. Confidentiality, that's a strong word. Yes, I have a lot of a lot of things in my background that I need to be careful and confidential about outside of fish keeping. Um, let's see, we got Gina Tucker, we got Fish Tropic. Uh, I think I said Happy Fish Guy. How you doing, Dan? Uh, we got Eric B. Uh, I think I might have seen Sherry Sweeney in here. We got Green Gross. Do you think guppies or antlers are more profitable? Uh, depends. Um, it really comes down to the market. However, uh, you may be able to fetch a little bit more up front. Um, not meaning quicker, just a little bit more money in um, for instance, like the uh, Pulsali wing eye. Uh, some people call them a black bar antler. There's different end class variants. There's different variations of those. However, with that being said, you have like your uh, your you have your uh, blue star antlers, your rainbow antlers, the, the list goes on. Um, I myself enjoy those type of antlers over like uh, Pocellia reticulata, variants, um, species of your guppies, uh, that type of thing. But it really comes down to a market. So really don't look at what uh, is difficult or what's trying to, trying to phrase this the appropriate way where it makes sense. Um, let's take, for instance, I use this as an example, just from speaking from life experience. About a decade ago, when I started getting into breeding, um, the microgeophagus during blue ram cichlids, not a whole lot. There's only a couple of us in the market. Um, pretty much I kind of took over that in the market as far as breeding at that time of the microgeophagus locally anyways, as far as supplier of the germ blue ram cichlids just they took a lot of time a lot of care you definitely have to know what you you're doing when it comes to water parameters there is some tricks in it uh getting a good genetic line from a good reputable source is number one key which is what i did um and uh yeah but again that amount of time yeah, I might have been able to sell them up front for a little bit more. However, you have to look at your return on investment. So time is money. Uh, guppies are not difficult at all to breed. Endlers are not difficult at all to breed. Um, they're very hardy, I find, through the years. I breed a ton of them personally. Uh, so with that in, with that in mind, um, you would have to look at your market. And if guppies seem to sell better than endlers, then you you have to choose. Uh, Sherry Swinney is wondering, number one fish, uh, must have missed that. Uh, I would say it's going to come down to your sister's plecos if it's done appropriately because everybody likes plecos. Um, let's see. Uh, we got a cram cop in the house. Cool sign, he said. Well, thank you. Uh, we got Jeff Rose fish keeping. Says, what's up, fish fam? If I miss any questions, guys, please do let me know. I told myself what to ask, but I failed. How are the platies coming along? They are currently very, very slow, slow, slow going. Slow going. So I'm just kind of letting, letting nature do its thing. So um yeah they're being stubborn but it'll happen uh kept switch said koi fish let's see here depending where you live uh that fish for demand is number one yes and most of the time individuals aren't realizing 
and Cistrus placos because of the pheromones and the toxins that are released from Ancestrus placos, believe it or not, will stunt their growth. So if you notice why your little Ancestrus placo that you pick up at three quarters of an inch in size, it's now eight months later and it's only gotten to an inch, there's something wrong. I can get my placos from the moment of free swimming, like I said, to breeding age at seven, eight months, and then pretty much to almost for full major, ma, adult maturity between a year and a half and two years uh, for both male and females. Again, you have to keep in mind there is some variables there depending on the genetic line and what have you. However, it comes down to water, consistent water changes is key. If you have the means to do so, uh, ensuring that you maintain the appropriate nitrification cycle in the system, as we talked about plenty of times on this channel, um, of course, water quality is number one key, but consistency is key. And it's not power feeding. Power feeding isn't it. I tested it for over 12 years. I've done that method, done that with other fish. What I found for myself personally, water changes, is what I did is I have one system set up with doing as I'm addressing with you. And I had another system set up where I was doing not consistent water changes where it was on a continuous drip. And guess what? The one that I had on a consistent drip, that same yield of spawn I had in tank A versus tank B, the one that was on a consistent drip system was the one that was growing 10 times as fast uh, versus that. So that's why I validated and proven the theory and the basis behind pheromones and toxins released by certain placos, specifically with Incistrius, I had to concede to the fact that it was valid. Um, let's see here. Uh, Captain Spice says, saltwater fish, um, play some uh, Cinemax for the, for the play of day. Yeah. Uh, serious question, are you my what? Um, uh, beautiful art are your on your walls. Nice job, Priscilla. I have to agree. A cram cop. Uh, did you glue them rocks onto the shelf behind you? Uh, are you talking about this right here? Uh, those aren't rocks. These are, sh if that's what you're talking about, those are shells and pieces of driftwood that uh, were given to us. Those you can pick up. This is something that you would find at like a home goods, TJ Maxx, that type of thing. Um, it's just, um, it's on a long, probably a six foot, um, um, almost like a fish line, thick fish line that's holding all that together. Uh, we got fish man in the house. How you doing? Uh, but on the reel, what are your thoughts on raising placos and bare bottom tanks opposed to substrate tanks? Does this matter for growth? Nope. Uh, that's actually what I was doing for the majority of time was bare bottom. Uh, just provide a lot of driftwood because they do need that natural fiber in their diet. That will definitely help keep keep things, um, uh, most importantly, where if they start getting clamped stomachs and they'll stop eating, uh, I find nine times out of ten, once a placo stops eating, um, you know, now a few days went by, it I can almost 97.5% tell you, chances are, no medication in the world is going to bring that placo back. I'm sorry to say it. Um, I've dealt with a lot of diseases over the years. However, just some of those things happen. Um, placos get very, very finicky, especially when they're changing environments and adapting to other environments. Um, I just, I personally uh, feed a, a mixed diet and I also skip feed. So, um, but again, those, those consistent drip water changes are absolute uh, essential, uh, especially if you, if you're really looking at a good yield and a good growth. Um, and that's just, that's just, uh, rearing of the, the swan. I'm not even going into the aspects of actually getting them, promoting, inhibiting some of those. And I'm not going to go into that here because I've done a lot of videos on it. Uh, let's see. Uh, most wild caught placos come in with some. Um, no bellies and most are sunken. Yep. Um, what I 
recommend. That's why I recommend Fiverr. Fiverr is a great way in order to um, uh, promote that digestive tract and balance with, uh, you know, good vegetation and that. So that's why I say if you're going to keep a bare bottom, uh, ensure that there's natural mulm and biofilm built up at some way in there because they are always always grazing they're always eating they're always chopping on things uh let's see here have you ever tried fluval bug bites plico formula um i haven't uh, tried the fluval bug bites yet uh, i do plan on trying that at some point in the future uh eric b is wondering if i use uh rapashi yes i am completely against using rapashi um, I think that my, not, not that I'm downing, don't get me wrong. Um, I'm all about the company. I'm all about Rapashi. I'm just biased against it. And I'm not even going to go into it. My fish were too dang spoiled in Placos to eat it. I tried seven or no, I tried three different formulations of Rapashi and not one of them ate the damn thing. I'm not even joking. So, needless to say, I don't use it. Irritated me. Uh, <laughs> it's supposed to have what it's ever, everything like a niece. Uh, yeah, I just don't. I mean, to justify, the way I look at it is, and, and I say this over and over and over again, I always give a ton of credit to veteran aquarist. Yeah, I've been doing this for over 13 years. Um, do I consider myself a veteran in a hobby? No, uh, we're all developing. It doesn't matter if you've been in it. I've talked to individuals who've been doing this for 50, 60 years, and there's things I've addressed with them that I've learned and developed certain techniques that we can always share with one another. So, uh, really it comes down to your attentiveness, uh, individually and, and just understanding what works and what don't and what is relevant, I guess you would say. Uh, spending ridiculous amounts of money on certain foods just isn't justified to me. If I can provide more natural means uh, of vegetation and proteins and so forth, then I usually will go that route. Um, think about it this way. How have hobbyists been doing it for 60, 70 years so, so successfully before any of those products ever came out on the market? Um, I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm a huge advocate for veteran aquarists that have been in this hobby for, you know, over 40, 50 years. And simplicity is absolute key. I've talked about that before. If you're watching this in the replay, feel free to check back in my Reptor videos uh, where I talked about really simplifying the hobby. Um, and, uh, you know, again, what works for me may not work for somebody else and vice versa. But, yeah, just to clarify, I don't have anything. Against Rapache, I just don't personally use it. Uh, let's see. Rapache is a trigger word around these parts. Uh, what do cho chocolate plague is supposed to look like? Um, they're just your common brown and sisters plague. That was just, um, just your, uh, your, if you look on our website, well, no, they're not available, so you're not going to see it. Uh, if you just put in chocolate bushy nose or bristle nose plague, oh, um, uh, on Google, then you can get an image. Uh, let's see. Placos and people both need fiber, absolutely. Is it true that corridors and Placos poison each other in shipping? Uh, I wouldn't personally ship those two uh, that's why when it comes down to it anybody that's received shipments from us rarely will you when, when it comes to placos uh and so forth usually i will just go ahead and individually bag most of my stuff yes it costs me more time a little bit more money but the most important thing to me it, you got to keep in mind with most of us that ship and breed fish and ship it we're losing money every time um it, it's just to me i enjoy to do it you really have to have a passion to do it as soon as i lose that drive and that passion then i'm going to stop shipping because that's when we mess up and do something wrong but 
Uh, it is very well possible. Yes, I, I just I wouldn't ever recommend uh, putting, uh, you know, multiple plecos in one bag together just because of their barbs um, and toxins and so forth. I mean, for a lot of different reasons. Let's see. Uh, I like antioxidants, natural disease relief where I can get it. Uh, he doesn't have anything against Rapashi. He just hates them. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Graham Cop has been on my channel for over a year. And yes, you also have my shirt. I appreciate that very much. And speaking of shirts, we do have them on special as well. So I think they're two or three bucks off. Can't remember. Uh, he streams when I'm normally, normally sleeping. Yeah, I haven't been uh, live streaming for, for quite a bit. So quite a bit. I did do one. The only reason I did the live stream on Sunday was to give an update for the ACA. Um, ACA. What am I talking about? Not the American Sickle Association. Come on, Jeremy. The ALA, the American Library Association. Uh, Dank Tank said, man, I got the shirt and towel. Boom. Yes, you did, sir. It's probably after, what, a week or two of being once we first started the website. Uh, Jamie McDonald said, shirts, is there a link? Uh, go right to the website, Jamie. Uh, SergeantTank.com. Not sure. We are limited. The reason that they are on special is um, I'm trying to purge through that inventory so I can then take those funds and then purchase a whole new order, which is probably going to fetch me almost a thousand dollars, which I'm not looking forward to. So just keep in mind, I've we as a family. Um, we gave probably last year in 2017 through just helping out other channels as far as promotions, through giving away. I don't even know exactly. Um, I probably gave away 40 or 50 shirts. So, but again, that really comes down to marketing. It was our thing, obviously, to get, get the word out, try to be able to get the awareness out there. There. Um, however, I can't put a new order in until I have the funds to do it because one of my missions is when it comes to the website is I just re I that was one of the one of the things in the agreements that I made with my wife um, if she's even aware of it or not is the fact was the website in order to um, be able to put it back into the hobby in one way or another and that doesn't include YouTube I'm just talking the website. So that's that's what it's there for. Um, let's see here. I uh, like the spirulina and brown cubes from Hikari. Awesome food uh, for frozen. Let's see here. Have you ever tried breeding whiptail catfish? That is one species I haven't got into breeding yet. I haven't kept a whiptail catfish in probably eight or nine years. <clears throat> but they are definitely, excuse me, they're definitely a, a awesome because there is a lot of different variations uh, and different species within that family. Um, one individual I would recommend checking out um, is Jeremy Bosch. You can check him out at uh, AmazonTropics.com. And I did do a fish room tour of him. Uh, Rob from Flip Aquatics also did, and Corey McElroy from Corey Co-op. So you can check them out. The one that I focused on was the killifish specifically. Those guys put out videos of the rest of the fish room, and he did show off a lot of those different um, um, fairly well and stuff like that. Uh, do you think discus is still profitable? Um, I got away from the discus thing. I never even got into breeding it. Um, you know, I, I never really got into it. Discus just aren't appealing to me. Uh, I picked up the discus. I thought my wife would enjoy them. And of course, you know, they just, yeah, really not into it. Probably because they've been around it for so many years now. Uh, we'll be married 14 years, August. So, I mean, yeah, when you're around something for so many years, 
she's got her interests. I got mine. I just kind of do my thing. But yeah, I, uh, I don't. I'm just not a huge fan. They just don't appeal to me personally. Um, let's see here. Uh, Jamie says it seems like the XLs are sold out. Yes, Jamie, just give me some time. Uh, once I uh, get the new order, uh, again, you guys got to keep in mind, any of you guys that might not be aware, I go through a local printing company, so that's why it is a bit more costly. They're very high-end, high-quality shirts. They're 50-50, 50% polyester, 50% cotton. So I wanted to set a new stage within the community, within the fish fam, to represent right off the bat one of the best quality shirts. Um, not to my own horn. However, the logo is pretty badass, if you don't ask me. Um, and I'm not being biased on that. However, I had a great uh, great artist to do it. Have you ever done rainbow fish eggs before? If so, uh, do you have success? Yes, I breed the uh, Melitania ruba rividiata. Um, and I don't find them any more difficult than really any other um, egg layer. Uh, I really apply the same tactics. If, if you want a little bit more fuzzy fish on my recommendations on doing that is check out the video that I did uh, on breeding of your orange lie tail killifish. A lot of the same aspects to that uh, is is almost almost straight across the board. Uh, Jeremy Everkeep, checker barbs. I don't really, I haven't got into the barbs. Um, I'm afraid there's a lot of great sources here locally uh, that breed barbs and have done it for years. And um, that's why I don't do a whole lot with barbs. However, I have great sources if I ever need them. Uh, how is Cherokee the seventh strike Kigoma? She is doing absolutely phenomenally well. Let's see here. I think the Playco shirt, aka Sergeant Tank t shirt, is definitely the best one out there, Steve Lacane. Well, I appreciate it very much, Steve. Uh, pretty badass, if you ask me. I concur. Miss him, Lamont. Yeah, I haven't talked to Lamont in quite a while. I got to reach out to see it. I think that they, <coughs> his lady's pregnant or I don't know if they had the kid yet. I don't think that they had their kid. Um, but yeah, it's probably been a year or so since I talked to the mom. Will you do a mom sandwich challenge, KG? Uh, Steve is wondering. <laughs> All right, that's, that's even... That's even pushing it. Ugh. Yeah. I don't know about that. But, yeah, I mean, ask away, you guys. If you have any questions the last few minutes here, feel free to go ahead and ask. Um, I try not to go in too much. That's why, you know, I'm not trying to downplay your question, or if I did a video on it, I just find it's easier. Uh, since I did the video, obviously, in the first place, I most likely will refer you to that video. Uh, but if you would like me to elaborate on something, or if you have a question, then please do ask. Uh, how do you raise blood worms? That's something in fish traffic I haven't personally done. I've, I've culturized um, like black worms before, but not blood worms. Um, Let's see. Uh, what do you feed bristlenose placos? That's a great question. I uh, use, besides that, that I mentioned earlier, more natural stuff, driftwoods and so forth, good calcification, one pound of crushed coral for 10 gallons of water. That is perfect for us in order to maintain uh, carbon hardness and so forth within the tank because that is an appropriate thing that they need. Um, also within their diet, however, I find uh, just French style green beans, something I've been doing for years. I actually feed it to all, basically every one of my tanks. Shrimp love it. Um, big guys love it. You know, larger cichlids. Uh, of course, crayfish love it. Um, snails love them, most inverts. So, yeah, French style green beans and then tetracolor granules uh, is the other one that I feed. Uh, I used to do a three mix um, uh, between Hikari. Omega-1, 
and Tetra. Over now, I just find what has been successful for me for greater part of the last couple of years is just Tetra Bella granules and the other ones. Let's see. Uh, do killifish typically swim in a clockwise or counterclockwise direction? Does it depend on which hemisphere they live in? <laughs> oh, Jeff, that's funny. <clears throat> you go ahead and you video that. I've heard before in Canada, maybe it was because I was 19 years old, crossing the border from Michigan into Windsor. Uh, of course, you know, they have great, great uh, things there in Windsor. You know, definitely great, um, great, <laughs> great places to sightsee. Um, <laughs> is my buddy and I noticed that there was a uh, counterclockwise direction uh, as far as the, the flow of the toilet being discharged. But yeah. Uh, although I made a mistake of feeding three week old green beans and lost a few guys due to it. Although I made the mistake of feeding three week old green beans and lost a few guys to it. Yeah, you just got to give us some time. Uh, <laughs> uh, just bought a six inch koi today. Pretty sweet pattern, KG said. Good to know. Uh, how do you tell if the green beans are bad? Um, the, you probably want to look at, obviously, I just recommend canned French-style green beans, the ones I personally recommend that I found no issues with. Uh, I don't even pre-rinse, um, and I've found zero issues in over 70 aquariums in the last year and a half uh, by not even pre-rinsing, but I go to Aldi. Uh, I found Aldi was the best source. Before that time, I was going to other places. Aldi by far is the cheapest. They have the quick, you don't even have to even use a can opener. It has a tab, a pull tab part on it now. You can pop it off. So um, I personally recommend Aldi. Most of you guys are going to have an Aldi around you. And, uh, yeah, you can pick them up there. I want to say, I don't know, 40, 40 cents a can, 50 cents, something like that. So. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you are worried about um, uh, salt and so forth on there, then you can always just, as a precautionary, you can pre rinse it. Let's see. Uh, white and cloudy. Yes. If you're talking about in the aquarium, um, then yes, you're going to know it's going to start growing a fungus growth on it. Uh, usually, if they stay suspended in the water column, then I'll just go ahead and remove them. Um, if the green bean don't sink, then it just, I don't like it, and I remove it. I found mo most oftentimes, um, uh, as long as they're sinking and going towards the bottom, I don't have any issues with it at all. Let's see here. Uh, drive semi and deliver all all these food and everything work for black horse. That is very cool. Uh, let's see here. I was getting mine at Walmart, but just started getting them at Aldi because you're right, they are cheaper. Uh, let's see. You can save a ton of money going to Aldi. Yes, you can. Jeremy, you try those. I'm going to butcher. Is it brioche? Is that the buns? Talking about Aldi? I'm not sure what you're talking about. Um, Aldi is a German version of Walmart. I can't can't believe they made it all the way to the States. Um, German version of Walmart. Yeah, you can find a lot of good food. Um, I've been, gosh, I've been personally eating at Aldi for... well over probably 16 17 years maybe 20 years now i even know long time uh quit talking about jeremy's buns um anyone ever microwave veggies in a coffee cup with aged water to get them to sink to the fish tank uh yeah you can uh if you're, if you're talking about fresh produce uh then i would typically boil it but 
trying to think if I've ever done it in the microwave. I think I've always just boiled it just because. Uh, pork chops are good quality too. Uh, if I'm going to go somewhere and get meat, um, I would go to, I, I find, uh, Family Fair is always going to have the best of meat. Um, I know that the USDA, um, the, the high quality steaks at Walmart are supposed to be, um, the sirloin cut are supposed to be high quality over I've I've tried them out. I used to do a lot of cooking and a lot of grilling. I don't do a lot of that anymore. I used to enjoy doing it. Um, but I used to get my uh, fresh chicken uh, or uh, like chicken breast or my steaks or um, pork or something like that. Uh, I would get <coughs> at Family Fair. I just always enjoyed uh, their meat for some reason over other places. Uh, Priscilla said, Dan bro, you're almost at 3K. It's a very slow process. It's taken a long time to get there, but hey, I'm not trying to sound. I had somebody ask me, uh, I'm not going to mention names, um, but this was when we first hit 1K. If I was excited and to be completely honest with you of course we all have goals and i don't want to get into the tangent of growth and all of that however i myself personally didn't you know i'm, <laughs> I'm trying not to come off in a um you know and i i don't know i mean maybe at ten thousand, then i might look a little bit differently at it however just the amount of time putting into it, um, you know, I I started off doing more collaborations at first than even my own videos. Um, probably before, you know, on I, I'm not gonna say before anybody else. Don't get me wrong. However, I think that's <coughs> and I wasn't going about it to try to get views. Actually, if you look back at some of those videos they yield the least amount of views. Um, the ones that have yielded the most views for me, believe it or not, are actually the breeding videos um, or updates, fishroom updates. Those are the ones that have um, brought in the most traffic. Uh, the problem is when you do fishroom tours and stuff like that, once somebody's seen it, they've seen it, you know, a hundred other times. Um, there's only so many times you can go and do same fish room store you know it's, it's a different thing if you're doing like collaboration and you gear the video around something a little bit different rather than just going tank by tank but yeah i mean uh it was more for me just to be able to finally just hang out meet other youtubers meet other fish nerds and it had nothing to do with how many views can i get from the video i still don't look at youtube as like you know that's why i always say organic i'm not obviously making million dollar thumbnails to try to drive in traffic i'm not click baiting to try to bring in traffic um i'm not even at my suggestive features i'm not even looking i understand how to grow it i've done enough research all i have is time throughout the day being a stay-at-home dad now for several years besides the little one if I really wanted to. So, I mean, I could be, I could be doing a lot more in order to obtain more knowledge behind it. Um, Cause that's one thing that most people know me for is anybody knows me personally, since I was younger is I'm one that does research, lots and lots of research. Um, however, now I just want to enjoy the hobby. And I want to, I like coming on here and just chit chat with you guys and hanging out. I miss doing it. I miss hanging out with you guys. Uh, it's one thing that we've done, what, over a year now. And uh, yeah, so can't believe <coughs> it's almost been, well, started pretty much in January, but I didn't really start putting out more content until around this time last year. But even been more like, yeah, it's well. 
this time last year. Uh, Steve said, I've been using the Passion Morning Wood and Mud Plecos Love It Too. For some reason, only my snails eat the beans. Uh, I've done zucchini, spinach, cucumber, my food. Let's see. Uh, I was there when you had like 200, so it's been a journey, Priscilla said. Yes, I know most of you guys have been here um, since pretty much the beginning. Uh, let's see. Uh, Steve said that Graham caught me patrolling, trying to catch me tanking dirty. <laughs> Uh, I want to get a pair of blue glares. I can't find them anywhere. Any advice where I can get some? Thanks. Um, oh, can't have mine. So, I'm trying to think. The best place is Aquabid. Um, even more so than Aquabid is go on Facebook and just start researching. Start getting yourself into. Um, uh, if you want to go to like the killifish groups, that's where I would recommend. So join every single Facebook killifish group that you can that has a good source. So um, like the American Killie Association, that type of thing, uh, you can check those out. But that's, that's where, and then what you can do is just put in there as long as you're not, you know, going against their their protocol if they have anything in particular but i don't see why any group would be like hey anybody have any blue glares that they're selling that type of thing be an issue uh but yeah that's my best recommendation i think you're going to be able to find information a lot faster all over off the top of my head uh i don't have any sources right now where i know people but they're not selling them uh, much respect to those that work hard and grow their channels into money-making projects. Prefer to keep it fun and simple. I feel bad for those that think they get rich with minimal work. That is absolutely 100% true. Uh, let's see here. Lumpy Dog said, Fish Bid, Biddens, Aqua Bid, at Fish, Fishy. Okay, gotcha. Thank you, Lumpy Dog. You just clarifying there the Aqua Bid. Um, we got Aqua Prentice. How you doing, buddy? Uh, let's see here. I agree, Jamie. It's hard to interact with bigger channels because it's just so busy. Uh, fish, fishy, bid, biddens. If I'm saying that right, I apologize. Um, hadn't thought about Facebook. Thank you. You are more than welcome. I found you after your stream with Jay Wilson. I probably watch you more than him now. I found you after. I found you after your stream with Jay. Are you talking to me, Jamie? I don't. You. I don't think you've been talking to me. Um, because I know you've been following me for quite a while. Uh, Steve said LR Brass has some blue glares for sale on his website right now. Are they out of stock, though, Steve? I know that he has the posting on there, but the last I checked, a day and a half ago. Um, just out of curiosity or two days ago, I believe they're listed out of stock, but I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, definitely check it out. Uh, Sergeant Tank Pats, what do you recommend I take for the MTS I'm suffering from? Um, more. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I would be the worst one to offer any insight there. Sorry, buddy. Uh, if anyone is ever in the giving mood, send me pencil sharpeners. Got like a hundred, but never can find one. That's too funny. Uh, let's see. But yeah, so you can definitely check with Lucas. Um, you can always send him a message, but. He is by far uh, are, are one of my favorite strains. Uh, let's see. I thought he just updated it, but yeah, I'm not positive either. I think he did put some up because he bought too many Achilles. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I'm a bit out of touch. 
Well, if that's the case, I'm going to need to head back over there and check it out. Uh, didn't you do a video stream with him? I thought that's where I discovered you. Uh, not with not with Jay, no. Uh -uh. Um, the live stream that I did was, you remember, probably a year ago now. Um, uh, it was around the 15th-ish of March. was with Lucas from LRB Aquatics and uh, Robin Amanda uh, from Folk Aquatics. So it may have been one of those. But I do need to get Jay on the channel sometime when I'm able. I haven't reached out to him yet, but I would love to have him on. Uh, let's see. So if you're listening, Jay, we can we can do a late, late night here. <clears throat> um, let's see. Uh, okay. let's see. <laughs> uh, Green Ghost, LRB is cool, but 200 tanks and nothing ever in stock. Uh, let's see here. Jamie said, must have been Lucas. Uh, Lumpy Dog. Matterhorn sounds like a Swiss thing. Of course, it's expensive. It better be able to make me a sandwich with that price tag. Laugh out loud. That's actually where I saw them first on Lucas's YouTube. Then I watched Sergeant Tanks from Mark Hupo. Yeah, Lucas has got a lot of great info on Kelly Fish. For sure. So you can always check out. He's done a lot of videos on how to breed and stuff like that. Um, but that's why I think I can relate to Lucas on a lot of different levels. Um, I know that he started breeding shrimp probably 12 plus years ago. I started doing shrimp over 13 years ago. Um, but just simplicity is key. So I really enjoy uh, most of the methods, methodology behind it because that's, to me, is just easiest to do. Um, Graham Cop said he fills pre-orders. I'm sure with the Patreon and stuff like that, that may be going on. I can't speak on behalf of Lucas. I don't know. But I would suspect maybe with Patreon, if you're focusing on that, maybe from a business standpoint, uh, that could definitely be one of those things, just to be fair. Um, but I don't know. Uh, so I got here late, so I'm assuming killifish is the recommended fish for profit. Aquaprens, no, 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 not killifish for profit. Um, you can check back Aquaprens, however, real quick, um, without going through all the details. Uh, my recommendation is your common ancestor is pushing those flaco. Uh, Priscilla clarified, yeah, he posts first on Patreon what he has. There you go. So I guess if you're of interest in wanting Lucas's fish for the investment of a dollar a month, I'm sure that may get you on the radar. I don't know. Just saying. Um, but yeah. Uh, I've always got everything ever ordered from Lucas, a request in advance because he sells out fast. Uh, how do you get scuds in your tank and maintain the colony in there for a natural food source? Uh, I don't personally do anything with scuds. Um, Daphnia and um, stuff of that nature and sea shrimp. Um, I find do phenomenally well as a natural food source, and most of that can just happen with um, uh, just seasoned tanks. Actually, sea shrimp is just a great uh, indicator that you have a well-established ecosystem, believe it or not. But as far as scuds, um, you would have to check out, I don't do anything with scuds. I would imagine that they're too difficult. They breed like rabbits. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, they're they're more competitive in their their care pace, their shell structure. I know is very very hard. Um, but yeah, um, I, I just don't want them in any, any of my tanks just because of um, uh, 
uh, out competing of food and that and that. Anytime I found them in my tank, usually coming in on a plant or something like that, um, I'll just remove them right away. Because I got enough going on to make this system. I don't want scuds. Uh, Lumpy Dog said Luke is very straightforward about catering to his Patreons. It's one of the perks. Uh, can you put Daphne in the tank? Can you put Daphne in the tank? With scuds? Is that what you're saying? Sure. Um, uh, KG said Daphne does well in green water. Yep. Absolutely. Um, what I'm excited about is uh, summer coming around here in Michigan because I love, love, love culturing um, mosquito larvae. It's one of the most exciting things I'm looking forward to as far as, so when it comes to outdoor ponds, I've done that. Um, I got enough aquariums going on indoors. I don't really care about outdoors. The only thing I'm going to do outdoors, I plan on this year, is just um, mosquito larvae. Uh, absolutely love it. The fish love it. It's a great, great source of proteins and nutrients. And if you want to trigger um, your fish to start breeding, uh, do those. They love them. Uh, I did a video on it if you want to check it out. Just make sure you maintain it. Don't let it get out of control. It's it's going to be the worst thing that you ever started. Uh, what's the easiest way to make green water? I The way I've done it in the past, I don't really do any green water anymore. Uh, either outdoors or right by like a main bay window, south side window, something like that, where you're getting a lot of natural sunlight. Um, that That's what I recommend. That's that's exactly what I used to do with my shrimp. So um, when I started 13 years ago or whatever, doing the just your Devidai cherry shrimp, um, kept her eating the window. I just they, they naturally ate off from that all day long. Uh, I always had a constant food source, so rarely did I ever have to supplement um, at all. Uh, let's see. All right, you guys, uh, that brings us over an hour. I appreciate you guys hanging out there with me uh, very, very much. Definitely check everything out if you would like down in the description below. Make sure you guys check out our website. It's one of the greatest ways you can support us. We have uh, livestock on there, dry goods. We're always adding to it, always updating. Lots of breeding projects going on. I hope to get a video out to you guys at some point. I do have some recorded video. Just need to edit it, take the time, and actually get it uploaded for you guys. Again, I appreciate you guys hanging out on this impromptu live stream here on Wednesday. Oh, March the 8th, 2018. Make sure you guys check out the American Library Association information uh, in the video that I just did on Sunday. So with that being said, you guys always stay encouraged. Keep on keeping on happy fishing. And with that being said, we're going to talk to you right back here on the next one.